in Mexico, people celebrate Christmas a little bit different than we do. For eight days leading up to Christmas from the 16th until the 24th of December, they have something called posadas. And posadas are parties where Mexican people come together and they reenact the movement of Mary and Joseph down to Bethlehem to give birth to Jesus. And so some of the people in the culture pretend to be Mary and Joseph and the other people pretend to be the innkeepers. And once Mary and Joseph move to the place of the party, they celebrate the birth of Jesus through eating, through drinking, through dancing, and through breaking a star-shaped pinata. The origin of the pinata is in Christmas celebration in Mexico. But that's not how I was introduced to pinatas. <laughs> I think Vita said it right. I'm, I'm a bleagro black and negro and y'all know we took the pinata and we bring it up at birthday parties <laughs> office parties spontaneous parties and what we do before we break the pinata is we completely disorient a person we give them a stick we blindfold them then we spin them around until they dizzy and once they're dizzy we spin them some more and then we all laugh as they swing and miss. You know, that picture of swinging and missing is a lot like how many of us feel this year, isn't it? Blindfolded by our burdens, swinging out of our struggles, trying to strike the pinata of our purpose, but disoriented by everything that surrounds us. This has been a disorienting year on so many levels, politically, it's been disorienting. The last 30 days here in Georgia, we didn't just have to vote once, we had to vote twice. <laughs> Disoriented, not just politically, but also economically. I don't know if you've been to the grocery store lately, but 12 eggs cost $8. Lord have mercy. Disoriented socially, where the decisions of a few affect the lives of the masses. But this Christmas, as we think about the birth of Jesus Christ, we celebrate a Savior who entered this world in his disorientation so he could reorient it. <laughs> What's amazing about the birth of Jesus is that his world, like ours, has some political problems, some economic problems, and some social problems. When Jesus was born, politically, there was a man named Herod who was king in Judea, and Herod was an insecure man and violently cruel. But what, what we see through the birth of Jesus is it doesn't matter what's going on politically because God is always at work spiritually. It doesn't matter who's on the throne, on earthly thrones. As long as we know who sits on heaven's throne, we got a reason to have hope. And let me tell you, there's not an election or a runoff needed to vote in the king of all kings. He's been king from the beginning, and he's going to be king to the very end. Economically, when Jesus was born, he was from a poor town called Nazareth. Nazareth was the wrong side of the tracks. It was on your way from somewhere to somewhere else, and Nazareth was nowhere. It was a place of about 2,000 people no economic prosperity, a place of poverty. But what's amazing about the birth of Jesus is that God will stop in a neighborhood, will pass by to find the woman he's going to choose to bring the Savior of the world into the world. And there's some people in this room right now who can testify, Reverend, you ain't said nothing about no Nazareth because from where I'm from, people ask the same question they asked about Jesus' hometown. Can any good thing come from Nazareth? Look at us in here on a Sunday night dressed up with our teeth all good and our shoes all clean and our clothes looking real nice. You can't tell about where you are, where you come from, but is there anybody from Nazareth who can testify, Reverend, I'm from the backside of nowhere, but God has been good to me. I'm straight from the hood, but look at me now now it's all good you ought to give God praise for the fact that he'll come to a neighborhood that other folks are passed by justifying you and justifying me. not just politically not just economically but socially 
the story says that Caesar made a decree to count all the people under his authority. And it is, isn't it amazing that people on the top can make a decree that affect people on the bottom? As soon as Caesar in Rome makes a decision, people start scurrying around Palestinian territory. And because of the decree of Caesar, Mary and Joseph had to move from Galilee down to Judea. But the shouting news in the birth of Jesus is that whenever the person on top makes a decree, God in heaven still makes a decision. Don't you know that God used Caesar's decree to move underneath the social construct in order to turn that thing on his head? And what God shows in the birth of his son is that the last shall be first. Is there anybody who's ever been looked over or left out or left on the bottom who can testify forever? And that's why I celebrate in this season because I serve a God who will come and flip the script in my favor. You ought to give God praise for the fact that when they make the decree, God still makes a decision. So if you need something real this holiday season to hold on to, hold on to the fact that we serve a Lord who entered this disoriented world so he could reorient it. And the baby grew to become a man and that man took the stick of his sacrifice, swung it at the pinata of our pain and out came the candy of compassion, out came the gifts of God's grace. And here we are today celebrating because where we swing and miss, he swung one time and hit it out the park. Is there anybody who's grateful this Christmas season for Jesus? You ought to open your mouth and give God praise for the baby who was born and the man who died. That baby who was born and that man who died has left gifts for you to receive. And I'm going to tell you the best gift you'll get won't be a week from today. Under some tree, the best gift you can get 2,000 years ago hanged on a tree. But that tree couldn't defeat him. I want to offer him to you tonight. Has your world been disoriented? Have you been thrown off in your life? Do you need to reorient yourself to what is real? I'm gonna tell you, there's nothing you can receive tangible, more real than the grace of God through Jesus Christ. So if you are here tonight and you don't know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, your world has been rocked from center to circumference. You're grieving and stressed out and anxious and frustrated and worried and confused and you need something real to hold on to this season. Come get it tonight. 